What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Season 4 here. It's been quite the adventure getting back from Canada um, after I was in Florida. What was supposed to be a simple sort of 13 hour drive south turned into a near three day excursion that involved uh, two tow trucks, road closures, um, and just overall costed me a lot more money and time than uh, originally planning temperatures are around negative 35 degrees below zero so naturally that causes a lot of issues with diesel engines um, kind of no matter no matter what you do unless you have a block heater or you're, you're somehow you know uh, able to keep everything warm uh, that, that's that's quite cold so I was having a lot of issues with the diesel and so because of that I'm back in Utah and uh, will probably be here for the rest of the year just because not only is it so good <laughs> here in Utah, but uh, just kind of had some unexpected circumstances. And uh, I've been skiing the past few days, but uh, honestly, I haven't been able to come up with anything that I feel was worthy to share with you guys. Today, uh, they announced 14 inches overnight, 16 inches in 24 hours here at Park City. So trying to come up, score some pow laps, see what opens today. I'm not, uh, you know, don't know how much of the upper mountain will open early but maybe they'll open some stuff up later on in the day i am rocking the uh white walker 121 this is uh probably the most fun and just kind of all around best ski that i've ever used especially in soft conditions like this i was debating on using the 133s because this is a solid amount of snow but i do think the 121s will do just fine first run here I'm also rocking some new gloves. They're not really new, I've had these for a long time, but they're my Hestras. I don't really use these that often, but my hands have been very cold. Let's see what we can get off this little snow field. Air into this pretty good or what? Kind of. It is soft. Nice little face shot there. Soft. Nice. Nice little 30 second warm up. And no line at silver load either. That's pretty big. Thought for sure Sylvie would be would be packed. Oh, it's always a maze trying to get through here. This is we're getting up here to the sort of like mid mountain. They opened up the Conkeys about 10 minutes ago. So we're gonna rip over there, see if we can spin some laps. And then uh, again, kind of, it's kind of like the sequence of events here where kind of go through to McConkey's and then hopefully shortly thereafter you'll get a juke opening. See what we're working with in here. It's so not as steep because it's so much snow. Mollies can be quite tricky sometimes because the 
there's such limited viz like on the open but let's just give this a shot here oh Beautiful snow. Oh, yes. Kind of one of those tree lines, you just got to let it run, but. So like clockwork, we did about three runs at McConkie's and they opened Jupiter. So if you're ever at McConkie's and there's continuously a line and then you come down to McConkie's and there's no more line, it typically means everyone pieced out to Pioneer below. So it's a good time to check the, uh, the lift report there, but we are certainly behind. Um, but I just, I told myself I wasn't gonna deal with the whole Potter panic today. I'm just gonna get what I can get, um, so. I don't think it should really be an issue. I'm just gonna work our way through some of these people here a little bit. You guys already know we are getting into an indicator here. I don't usually drop at this spot, but let's give it a shot. Oh my god. Just wait and see, right in here. Here it is. Can't see. Can't see. Oh, 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 whoa. Literally just could not see where I was going. that I couldn't see. I mean, typical Jupiter fashion. It's just been nonstop, no matter how long the line is, just keep getting fresh snow after fresh snow after fresh snow. I think we're pushing 230 and there's just still, I don't even leave zones when I'm here at Jupiter because I just can farm so much in this little area that I don't even venture out anywhere else. I get a little bit of everything that I like, some steeps, trees and pow so i'm just enjoying it the white walkers are just doing amazing 
And uh, just one of those sick days. One of those just gnarly jupe days that I feel like I'm on deja vu, like I've been here before. I've done videos just like this, but this is just kind of the magic of this little area. So we're gonna keep going because uh, there's still snow for me to ski in there, so. We're actually skiing right to the to the bell here, so we're gonna probably probably try to get two more in here. See my face, my helmet. It's pretty uh, pretty toasted. Face so. shots. Met up with Joe those for the, a few laps. Those are the proverbial Lucas face shots. Yeah. Only he can capture those. Both on the White Walkers. It's just such a fun ski. When I first got it, I was a little bit concerned. Like it's so big, it's you know edgeless on a lot of this part of the ski. Like can you can you ski around the mountain with it? But it, it really does. You know, it's not something you want to take it on a groomer day, but it, it's very versatile to get around um, uh, the mountain. So, super fun ski. Right where I was standing. It's like, hey, speed though. It's like uphill we get there. that my friends is going to wrap up the final ski day of February just essentially a bottomless pow day um, up at Jupe I think the one thing you might find if you've never been to Jupe depending on where you've skied is that the shots can be quite short depending on where you go um, there are opportunities for longer vertical runs um, but a lot of the stuff that I like to ski in that zone tend to be kind of short but uh, it's just a fun area to lap. And I, there's just something special about being back up in Jupiter Bowl on that two-seater lift. Um, it's something that I feel like you don't find as much anymore at, at mountains. So of all the mountains I've, I've been to now recently, um, you know, Jupiter has kind of fallen lower on the degree of difficulty. Um, it's not really as gnarly as some of the other places I've been, but it still has got that just sort of, you know, maybe it's because I've, I've grew up skiing there and stuff like that, but it's just the, one of those places that I, I, I always have a good, good time at. So I'm not really sure exactly what the, uh, what the rest of the season is going to look like. My van is pretty much, uh, 
out of commission. My batteries, like they won't even power on any of my appliances at this point. So I think I need to kind of take my electrical system apart and, and figure out what's going on. Um, because right now, uh, Luna is, uh, Mechanically, she works fine, drives around, but I really just have no functionality in the back. So all around a sick day. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys are having a fabulous uh, winter. And now we're looking into March. So we'll see what uh, what kind of the start of spring scheme brings us. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you, man. Peace out.